If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question before listening on. In order to calculate the magnitude of the torque that is exerted on the loop, we can refer to the following equation from this chapter. So here is that formula. The Greek letter tau is being used to represent the torque acting on the loop, and then we have all the different variables defined in the box below. You might want to pause the video and take a look at this before moving on. Most of the quantities in the formula in this particular question are relatively straightforward because they're stated in the question. So for example, B being the magnetic field was stated as having a value of 0.8 Tesla. I is the current in the loop and that was stated as being 1.2 amps. A is the cross-sectional area of the loop and if we look at the picture we can see that the loop is rectangular. So when we go to calculate the area all we need to do is calculate the area of this rectangle which of course is the length times the width so that won't be too challenging. N is the number of loops and that was stated as being 100. And then theta is what really turns out to make this question somewhat challenging. It is the angle between the magnetic field and what is called the normal. And so that warrants a little bit more explanation. And maybe to get a better sense of what that angle means, we can take a look at a simple picture here. We can see that we've drawn an orange circle and that might represent a circular loop of wire. The normal turns out to be a straight line that passes directly through the center of the loop and is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. So a key idea is that the normal line is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. And then what we've drawn here is a green vector that would represent a magnetic field. And when we use the angle in this equation, we always want to use the angle that's between this imaginary normal line and the magnetic field vector. So right there would be our angle. And so the challenge would be to look at this picture and determine the value of that angle. And that's what we'd like to discuss next. So here is the diagram. We've taken off the labels for the length of the sides just to provide some clarity. And then there is a red line that's projecting right through the center of the loop and is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. Hopefully that's evident from the picture here. We've also included a magnetic field line that's pointing along the positive x direction. We remember the question actually states that the magnetic field is indeed directed along the x axis. So what we would next want to note is that the angle from here to here would be a 90 degree angle. And hopefully that's clear from the drawing. They stated that this angle was 30 degrees. So now we just have to ask ourselves, what's the angle between the normal and the magnetic field vector? That's going to turn out to be theta. And we can see from the diagram that it's going to turn out to be a 60 degree angle. So when we plug in for theta into the formula, we must make sure to put in 60 degrees as opposed to 30 degrees. And that was the challenge of this question. Everything else is indeed in standard units. So at this point, it's just a matter of plugging in all the known values. Note again that for the area A, we simply did the length times the width because the loop was a rectangular loop of wire and the area of a loop would be its length multiplied by its width. And when we compute this, we should end up with approximately 9.98 newton meters for the torque acting on the loop. And then as for the direction, we can refer to the right-hand rule number one. But before doing that, let's notice that the current is traveling in the direction shown by this purple vector. We can assume that once the current reaches this bend in the loop, it's going to turn and go down the section of the loop this way. And so I want to keep that in mind because we're going to try to visualize this by looking downwards on this point right here. So here is one attempt at drawing the right hand rule. I admit it's not that great, but it's the best I could do. We've got our thumb pointing down in the direction of where the current is flowing, which is down this section of wire as previously noted. Then we have the fingers projecting in the direction of the magnetic field, which remember is pointing in the positive x direction. And then we have the force, which would be projecting whichever direction our palm is facing. Now we've labeled this side the palm so that we know which side of the hand we're looking at. And so in this case, the direction that the palm of the hand would be pushing, so to speak, would be that way. So we can see that's going to tend to push the loop in this direction. And as a result, the loop is going to move in a clockwise direction. So again, if we were looking from above, we would see the loop rotating in a clockwise fashion. So we can say clockwise as viewed from above. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it.